I recently reviewed the HP Envy X2 with Windows 10 on ARM. It's one of my favorite devices of 2018. In fact, I use this myself every day, but a lot of you were excited about this, the Intel version. Basically the same device, all better of course, right? Not quite. Today I'll tell you why you shouldn't buy this device, and believe it or not, it's not the CPU that matters. Stay tuned. All right, let's start with the beginning here. So both of these devices are the NVX2, one's ARM and one's Intel. There's a lot more than that that's different. So this one goes for $1,000, that includes the keyboard and pen. This one goes for $1,150, also includes the keyboard and pen. So there's a $150 difference. Now, interestingly, this ships with Windows 10 S, but you can unlock that to Windows 10 Pro, which is free and is pretty neat. This, however, ships with Windows 10 Home, which is a little weird. So you don't get Pro with this, and if you want that, you're gonna to have to pay that upgrade fee. So that's actually one instance of where they're sort of bearing and switching costs a little bit. The other thing is when it comes down to hardware, they are basically the same, but there are some subtle differences. You still get four gigs of RAM. You still go and get 128 gigs of storage. This one actually uses a Samsung storage solution. I think it's SATA. You only get around 500 megabytes read and 300 for write, which is okay for this sort of device. It's a lot better than a hard disk drive and it feels very similar to what is on the ARM version. In terms of screen resolution, they're both gonna be the same with full HD. They're both touch, they both support pen. In fact, they ship with the same pen as well. Other great features is they both have front-facing speakers, which sound really nice. You also get Windows Hello camera integration for that infrared for facial recognition, and they both work very well, although the Intel version I think actually works a little bit faster, probably due to that processor. You also get ambient display brightness with the Intel version, which is not found on the ARM one. Why, I don't know, but it's there. So if you like to have your display auto-adjust on occasion, well, the Intel version is gonna be better. The other core difference is with the ARM version, you'll get a single type C connector, whereas on the Intel one, you get two type C connectors, which is still not as good as a USB type A, but two is better than one. So the Intel one is definitely gonna be better for input and output. They both also have a micro SD slot for expansion and LTE SIM slots for adding 4G LTE, which is sort of the primary purpose of both of these devices. When it comes to HP, they're gonna use an Intel modem, whereas the ARM, of course, uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon one instead. Now, when it comes to that 4G LTE, there's actually a surprising difference. The Qualcomm performs better when using a Verizon SIM. So we just swapped out the SIM between these and ran the test side by side. Both are using Verizon in Westboro, Massachusetts. And as you can see here, with the Qualcomm version, we're getting 23 down and not very good up. Now, mind you, we barely have a signal here, so it's not doing very well. Uh, when it comes to the Intel version though, this is actually a little bit lower. We have seen higher, around 13 megabits per second, but it's still about half the speed as we were getting with the Qualcomm version. The upload is a little bit better. Also milliseconds for ping is around the same as well. Again, Westboro, Massachusetts. So when it comes to performance of the LTE, we're actually gonna see a little bit better with Qualcomm, which makes a little bit sense. The Intel version is not a gigabit type cellular modem, it does 450 megabits per second max, whereas this one can do up to one gigabit per second, which is gonna be much faster. The Snapdragon is a newer chipset, so it's gonna perform better, and that's exactly what we say. So when it comes down to performance, that is gonna be the biggest question that most people have. Obviously, Windows 10 on ARM does very well for inbox apps and standard Windows stuff in the store, but struggles a little bit with non-recompiled apps that are Windows 32. When it comes to this device though, you're gonna get an Intel Core i5 processor. Well, technically it's a 7Y54 processor, that is, it's a Y series. That means the TDP is basically cut in half, it's around six and a half watts versus the standard 15 watt that's found in a typical Core i5 processor. That means for performance, you wouldn't get very good here for launching applications in short bursts, but it doesn't perform quite as well when it comes to long duration. That is, if you're gonna be gaming or say video encoding, you wanna see this thing start to throttle heavily. That's because there's no venting on this. There's no fan, it's all passively cooled. That also means it does get hotter on the back depending on what you're doing. 
Now, if all you're doing is sticking with the native apps, Office, and apps from the Microsoft Store, these actually perform very much the same. There's really no advantage to them. UWP apps are pretty quick to launch on all devices. And that is especially true here for ARM as well as Intel. So that's how you're gonna use the device. There's really no performance difference. Where it matters, of course, is Windows 32 apps where the Intel version will outperform. And for those short bursts, that's where the Intel version really matters. When it comes to Geekbench on single core, you can get 3,700, whereas for multi-core, you're going to get around 6,700. That's a very good score. That's comparable to a Core i7 processor from a few years ago. So for short bursts, the Intel version is pretty awesome. Now, when it comes to battery life, you're looking around eight to nine hours, which in my opinion is acceptable versus ARM where I only push around 16 hours. So you're still gonna get that one and a half times difference with the ARM version. So it depends on what you prioritize, but let's not kid ourselves. Eight hours to nine hours is pretty good for Intel as well. All right, so far so good. So why not just get the Intel version? <sighs> I gotta take a deep breath. HP royally screwed up this device and it comes down to the keyboard and the folio mechanism. Now I know what you're saying. Aren't they the same devices with the same keyboards? No, for inexplicable reasons, there's a very different mechanism with the ARM version versus Intel. The ARM version has this cool foldable kickstand in the back that can adjust to all degrees of angles, including laying flat. It works very well, it's a very stiff hinge, and it makes it using your lap very easy. The keyboard base also clicks up like the Surface Pro. It's pretty long and works well in the lap. You also have a really large size trackpad, which as I emphasized in my review, is Precision Drivers. It's one of my favorite. It's a very good trackpad. So the whole typing experience with this device is just excellent. In fact, one of the reasons why I like the NVX2 with ARM so much, is just the overall experience. Folding out, using that kickstand, the keyboard, typing, mousing, is just very good with it. When it comes to Intel though, for some reason HP changed it up. The keyboard is now shorter, so you don't have as much throw with it, which means your palms hang off. It also means the trackpad is smaller and shorter. It's really frustrating to use. And to make it even worse, it uses ELAN drivers. Now, I am such a precision touchpad snob that ELAN is below synaptics in my book. Like, ELAN is really bad. I'll give it a little credit here. As far as an ELAN trackpad, this one's actually okay to use. It's just why? Why would you not put on precision drivers with this versus ELAN? So the trackpad's not as good, the typing's not as good. This isn't fun to use in your lap, and that's because of the hinge on the back. It doesn't have one. Instead, it uses this classic mode where it snaps into position, which is not as fun to use. It's not as easy, it's clumsy. I have to reposition it multiple times. You also really get one one angle. There's this angle and then there's a lower angle or you can use it completely flat and that's it. But when you're using this in the lap, it tends to weeble wobble back and it's just not as fun to use. It's because of this entire experience with the keyboard, the trackpad and the kickstand on the back that I really can't recommend using this device if you want to use it on the go, which is how I think most people would want to use it. Even using it at a desk is merely okay. But the ARM version gets it so right, it's just baffling why they didn't do it here with Intel. Now I know what you're saying, Dan, just swap out the covers and shut up. You can't, they didn't make them interoperable, so you couldn't even buy or swap them out even if you wanted to. All right, let's bring it all in. I didn't really do a full review of this, and that's because this device I just find so frustrating, I just couldn't even use it daily. So because of that, I can't recommend you buy it. And it's really a shame because the Intel processor on it is actually really nice. It's an Intel Core i5, sure it throttles heavily, but it's gonna give you that burst. If you're looking to run Windows 32 apps, executable applications, the old school stuff, this is actually a really solid choice. It's just the rest of the experience is just absolutely terrible. If, however, you need something with a better experience and you're okay with sticking with the Microsoft Store, well, the NVX2 with ARM is definitely gonna be the better choice and you'll save $150. Plus, technically, you can get Windows 10 Pro with it, which is not a huge selling opportunity, but there it is. Now, even when it comes to the NVX2 with ARM, we just heard the announcement of the Snapdragon 850, and I can tell you this code name for this device was actually Chimera when it was being developed, and now we are hearing there is Chimera 2 in the works, which, as you can surmise, runs a Snapdragon 850. Now, I don't expect that device to come out till later this year around the holiday season, but the Snapdragon 850 will give you around a 30% performance improvement, which, if you're hesitant about buying Windows 10 and ARM, may be worth waiting for. As to what Intel's going to do next, that remains a mystery as well. This is going to catch up, in my opinion, pretty quickly to a Core i3 and Core i5 processor, and the Snapdragon 850 will definitely achieve at least some of that. 
What Intel has coming next, I'm not sure. I can't recommend buying this device, but HP, just rework that keyboard and make it the same here. And I'll make choosing between these a lot easier. Now, if you want more information about these devices or you have questions, leave them in comments. I can always do a follow-up video. Otherwise, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.